in this class we will discuss the new cinema of brazil which is known in the history as cinema novo movement the word novo is a portuguese word it means new cinema novo therefore means new cinema before we go into the proper history of cinema novo movement which started in the late 1950s of uh, uh, 20th century just browse the history of the development of cinema cinematic art and culture in brazil brazil being a prominent latin american country was a huge market for hollywood cinema since late 1920s so brazilian film culture was basically dominated by hollywood cinema the people were introduced acquainted with hollywood cinema and they were habituated with hollywood cinema in 1930s and 40s in 1929 mario pihoto a brazilian filmmaker made a film called limite limite is the first important brazilian cinema limite shows two handicapped person a man and a woman they are traveling in different parts of brazil in uh, hills in plains in sea in cities in villages in different part their captivity and this travel actually is allegorically refers to the history of brazil and the situation of brazilian people another important film uh, which was made in 1933 was umberto mauro's uncut diamond uncut diamond also shows the social reality of brazilian life except these two films limite and uncut diamond in 1930s and 40s there were no considerable brazilian brazilian films we find in from late 1930s brazilian cinema industry was boosted up by hollywood investment because of good neighbor policy good neighbor policy is a policy taken by usa uh, uh, to get rid of uh, uh, in order to get rid of the great economic depression which started in usa since 1928 so in 1930s late 1930s usa took good neighbor policy accepted a good neighbor policy that means they tried to establish the uh, uh, the friendship and trade and commercial relationship with some latin american countries anyway brazil was a part of good neighbor of usa and brazil in brazil many hollywood uh, film companies they invested in brazil uh, the result the most prominent result of hollywood investment of uh, in brazil was the veracruz cinematographs veracruz cinematographs is a company and a industrial setup established in brazil with the help of hollywood investments which tried to boost up hollywood cinema but unfortunately in that period hollywood cinema was dominated by chanchada jor films chanchada means a kind of comedy films which were very cheap melodramatic and which were over uh, kind of connotated with some kind of uh, sexual cheap sexual gestures so this chanchadas later uh, uh, became uh, later uh, formed in a, a television genre in brazil uh, which is very notorious television genre known as porno chanchadas anyway apart from this chanchada films vera cruz introduced some new kind of films which are nothing but the imitation of hollywood cinema 
the imitation of Hollywood Western cinema as an imitation of Hollywood Western cinema, the Brazilian filmmaker started making Brazilian Western uh, which were set in the northeastern uh, hinterland of Brazil like Hollywood gangster films, uh, uh, some Brazilian filmmakers started making gangster films which were si situated in Rio and Sao Paulo slum areas. Now, the Veracruz experiment, though it uh, actually siphoned in some kind of money in Brazilian cinema, but it shows the bankruptcy of Brazilian filmmaking that they are, they were nothing but in that period, they were nothing but the imitation of Hollywood cinema. The first important effort which denounced Hollywood cinema, which denounced the capitalist cinema and uh, established uh, a new route was Nelson Pereira dos Santos's Rio 40 degree. Rio 40 degree was made in 1955 with a small amount of budget and with some collective effort N Nelson Pereira dos Santos made Rio 40 degree which shows the life of a group of poor children who are living in Brazilian slum areas. From the point of view of four such children, Nelson Pereira dos Santos critically observes the elitist and aristocratic decadent society of Brazil. Nelson Pereira dos Santos's Rio 40 degree shows a different route to, to uh, of national cinema in Brazil, which is which strongly criticized the imitation of Hollywood cinema, which strongly criticized the uh, colonial residue in the society, and which strongly reflected the uh, people's life the life of real life of people in Brazil. Rio 40 degree and Nelson Pereira's other films in 1950s were deeply influenced by uh, Italian neorealism and the political documentary cinema of Joris Evans. Now Nelson Pereira made another film on Rio City which was known as Rio North Zone. Rio North Zone shows the uh, life and death and creation of a uh, samba singer. The samba singer is living in a Rio slum. His compositions were sung in the national radio. His compositions are used by film musicians, but unfortunately the credit doesn't go to the person because the person belongs to the margin of the society. No one is there to say something uh, in his favor. So the miserable life of the person. So these two films shows the Brazilian slums uh, uh, actually paved the way of Cinema Novo. From 1960s, we find few other filmmakers, Joaquim Andrade, Clover Rocha, Rui Guerra, and some other filmmakers, along with Nelson Pereira, formed a new movement which, uh, which was heralded by Nelson Pereira's Rio series in 1960s and the uh, 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 Cinema Novo started. Now, Cinema Novo focused in two areas. One is called favela. Favela means urban slums and another is called Sertão, means the arid backland northeastern of northeastern Brazil, the hinterland where poor peasantry of Brazil are living. So, Cinema Novo focused in these two areas, favela and sertão. 
As far as ideology is concerned, Cinema Novo was a staunch critic of Hollywood cinema because Hollywood cinema is a kind of capitalist cinema which never reflects the life of Brazil, the life of uh, uh, the poor countries. And uh, in order to do so, uh, Cinema Novo actually uh, criticizes the Hollywood genres and delves into the uh, documentary reality of life, delves into the marginal cultures and reality of life. In 1963, Nelson Pereira's Barren Lives and in 1964, Glover Ross's Black God White Devil actually became most important, two most important films of Cinema Novo which are focused on Sertão or Northeastern Brazilian backland. In Black God White Devil is a film which refers to the history of peasant struggle in Northeastern Brazil. In 1896-1897, there was a battle in this northeastern region of Brazil between the peasant and the state. The poor peasant revolted against the state. They demanded a new kind of land reform. They demanded a new kind of nation which would support the marginal people of Brazil. That armed struggle of peasantry known as Battle of Canudos. This Battle of Canudos was referred in Clover Rosa's Black God, White Devil. Black God, White Devil shows the life of a peasant Manuel and Manuel's wife Rosa. So Manuel and Rosa are situated in different facets of a power structure. One day Manuel murders the landlord and actually runs away from his village. Now Manuel encounters a mystic cult known as Sebastião and then he encounters a social bandit who live in the Brazilian hinterland. this mystic cult, Sebastião, and who is this uh, social bandit, Antonio das Mortes? This Brazilian peasant community, we can find a m existence of a mystic cult who are basically believe in Catholicism. Now, this mystic cults, they actually blended two elements, the Catholicism with the African religions. This mystic cults before the Battle of Canudos and after Battle of Canudos, they became the shelter for poor peasants. They belong to a violence, a violence which means the sacrifice, a violence which means the revolt like that. <laughs> Followers of these mystic cults, like Sebastião in this film, uh, are uh, they roam in the area, they roam in the uh, vast uh, fields with arms and with a kind of slogan, with a kind of religious slogan and arms. Now, the another group which uh, 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 Manuel and Rosa encounter is social bandits. Who are these social bandits? Social bandits are some Robin Hood-like figures who supported the 
peasants war against uh, state and these social bandits they uh, uh, became again the shelter for the uh, dissident peasants and uh, who uh, uh, protect them the peasants from the torture oppression of the state and landlords so manuel and rosa encounters different forces in the uh, vast area uh, northeastern backland of brazil <laughs> Glober Rosa's film shows everything in a Vrestian fashion. Uh, it's not a single, uh, it's not a uh, unruptured story. There are different ruptures. There are different uh, kind of uh, elements in the film. Some elements in this film Glober Rosa borrowed directly from folk theatres. So, Black God, White Devil, uh, uh, therefore became a very important, actually the most important film of Cinema Novo. Historically speaking, Cinema Novo could be, be observed into in three phases. Phase 1 is 1960 to 1964, Phase 2 is 1964 to 1968, and Phase 3 from 1968 to 1972. Actually, from 1955, the primary phase of Cinema Novo started, which paved the way to Cinema Novo in a proper sense. So, Nelson Pereira's Rio 40 degree in 1955 to started the precursor of Cinema Novo, just the introduction to Cinema Novo, but it properly started in 1960. So, in 1960 to 1964, we find that Cinema Novo actually uh, stressed on the society, the, the critical uh, appreciation of the society of favela and Sertao. But from 1964 to 1968, we find uh, a change in Brazilian politics too. In Brazil, in 1955, from 1955 to 1964, there was a uh, leftist popular government which actually inspired the cinema of a filmmakers to make film and also state uh, also came to join hands, state came to uh, help uh, Cinema Novo movement. Uh, but in 1964, this popular unity government uh, was uh, uh, toppled by a military coup and military dictatorship again occupied the power in Brazil. In this uh, second phase, therefore, Cinema Novo tried to uh, show allegorically directly the politics of Brazil, the failure of socialist thinking and popular government as well as the uh, 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 oppression of the conservative government. So, uh, in this phase, uh, we can uh, find the films like uh, Nelson Pereira's Hunger for Love, 1968 and Glover Rosa's Land in Anguish, 1967. Land in Anguish of Glover Rosa shows the, an area, a city where the people are actually oscillating between the popular leader and the conservative leader. In Nelson Pereira's Hunger of Love, we find an intellectual who is exiled in an island and who is blind and he is also in a confused state what is the right political path he is in a confusion. So, the confusion of Brazilian society, it, the political confusion was shown uh, in the second phase of Cinema Novo films. In the third phase of Cinema Novo films, which is again, which focuses on the cannibalist manifesto, which focuses on the identity issue of 
Brazilian cinema. Actually, this cannibalist issue uh, was there in Brazilian culture for a long time. In 1922, uh, in uh, the Brazilian uh, cultural activists and many other Latin American cultural activists actually met in uh, 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 Sao Paulo and in this uh, cultural meeting, Oswald de Andrade, a painter, a poet, he published a manifesto which is known as Cannibalist Manifesto, which uh, actually uh, gives us a very famous line coining uh, by uh, coining uh, Shakespeare's famous line in, Ham, uh, in Hamlet, to be or not to be, uh, this is the question. Oswald de Andrade says, to be or not to be, this is the question. To be here is a, is a, is a, is a uh, Brazilian tribal community who live in Amazon basin. So, to be or not to be, this is the question, is that what is the uh, manifest to us, reflects, uh, reflects uh, the question in Brazilian identity, what is the Brazilian identity, Portuguese colonial rule, the modernity or the primitive cannibalism uh, like that. So, this uh, thing, uh, this uh, uh, identity question again was uh, coming up. Uh, uh, in the time of 1968 to 1967 in Brazilian Cinema Novo. Particularly in this phase, uh, we find uh, uh, one of the most famous films, How Tasty Was My Little Frenchman by Nelson Pereira dos Santos and another very important uh, filmmaker of Cinema Novo, Rui Guerra. Rui Guerra's very famous film of Gods and the Unlead in 1970 which shows the uh, life of an adventurer who comes to Brazilian hinterland and tries to establish plantation and actually encounters with the primitivism, primitive life, tribal life. <laughs> How Tasty Was My Frenchman again shows the life of an adventurer, French adventurer who comes for timber trading in a part of uh, Brazil where he was confined by the uh, a tribal community and finally the tribal community eats his flesh. Uh, so the film is ironically is named as How Tasty Was My Little Frenchman. E até mais. Para jogar. Para Já me recuerde se tu tira a rama cortava sui. Se tu tira optare que era recuada sui. E a suraço. Aí se murchava a su supe. Ne morosaba se anama, mai anama se hoyama. Rejo, tu pan rayar in de, in te requau uae. Se tu tira, in ti tu pan rayar o pau. E curice mi a sua e. O mura manhã, curice su achará que te. Ramei a si que São Vicente o pé. Vamos. Vene. O trabalho. The Brazilian intellectuals, they proclaimed that how to encounter modernity, that say they, they say that our body is primitive, we eat up modernity, recycle in our body and then we actually digest modern, uh, we are modern in our blood, we are uh, primitive in our flesh like that. Anyway, uh, this third phase of uh, Cinema Novo movement uh, reflects this part, this identity question of Brazil. Uh, in the aftermath of 1972, on the face of uh, 
uh, extreme uh, state of pressure and uh, st state of pressure Brazilian cinema novo actually fizzled out many of the filmmakers uh, left Brazil and uh, forced to go to exile and uh, this is the way uh, Brazilian cinema novo finally uh, died down.